All right, he's putting in the retainer clip on the back. But by the way, this is not for a... You have to have the right tool and take a pretty strong set of hands. Mm. But you can see it goes right in there. That stops, that stops the bearing from coming out. So now your shaft has got one in the front, which holds the shaft into the bearings. And the retaining ring in the back keeps the bearings in the housing. This can never come apart. Plus, we got, so we have two retainer clips and a Loctite on top. That's cool. Hey, by the way, since we're right here, I'm going to show them what we have here. You'll notice the two Zerk fittings on top. This is a Zerk check valve. Grease comes out, but it doesn't go in. This is where you put your grease in. It's very important that you only grease your pumps maybe once a week and do not over grease it. If you over grease it, you're going to you're gonna actually blow the bearing caps off the bearing. Now this is a bearing cap, you can see it right here. That's the black part, okay? Do not over grease it and blow those off because if you do, you're gonna end up replacing a shaft in the bearing assembly. So it's best to do this at the end of the day or when the pump is good and warm. All right, we went ahead and chucked it up in the lathe here, but again, a vice or anything. The main thing is you wanna keep the shaft stale, you wanna keep everything nice and straight. So go ahead, Ronnie. So he's putting in the white ceramic seal. This is the pump seal, the part that fails on a pump. Very system. important that it's in there straight, all the way to the bottom. And this is probably the most common thing that will fail on a pump. Oh, okay. You gotta get this in. It's good to push with a block of wood something something soft because you don't want to chip the ceramic. If you do end up chipping the ceramic, you gotta you gotta change the seal. Yeah, look at it from the side, it's nice and straight. Yeah it is. Now we're gonna put the the shaft spacer uh, shaft and space, spacer. impeller spacer in. Okay. That's the stainless steel That's the right? stainless steel one. Now when I put the the black seal in, which is the second part of the seal assembly. The ceramic seal? I put a little lubrication in. If you got some WD-40, that'd okay. work. I just put it on the rubber right. so that the rubber will slide easier onto the seal. Over the stainless steel sleeve? Yeah. And then make sure if you got any on the front side that you wipe it off because that won't let the pump seal seal right. Okay. Then I put gloves on because it's kind of hard on your fingers. Very important when you slip this and push it on that you put it on very straight or you will have a leak. I, put, I set it on and I turn it. Once it's straight, I will push it until it stops and I turn it as I'm pushing it to ensure straightness. So if that part's crooked at all, it you're really, going to get a leak of seal. Yes, you will. So very important. Okay. Okay, okay the next step we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and put some silicone around the seal. It is very important you do this. It's kind of ugly, but it is necessary. We just use a typical RTV now silicone for, one, silicone seal shaft. one. The second one is the shaft, and then I put a, a line over the over the thread. You're right, on, Ronnie. It is ugly. <laughs> but if you don't put enough silicone on there, you're going to have a seal that leaks. This makes the whole assembly seal, the spring assembly, with the washer. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to compress it all down. Then, and it's different from our other seals, isn't it? Yes. This the impeller will lock down on that, on the um, the shaft. On the shaft space of the stainless steel. The stainless steel. One. That's one, all you do is one put it in there. Then you want to lock the impeller onto the shaft, which is easy in my lathe, but for you, a vice. That's it. Okay, that's it. Let me look in here real quick. Sorry. So, it looks like it almost compressed the seal completely. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a good push on it. So, if you have to change your seal, you have to remove the impeller. Okay. Go when when you have to remove your impeller and it's been on there for any length of time, um, it kind of oxidizes in the threads with the water. So you want to use a chain wrench clamp, which is this, and you want to wrap a piece of cardboard around your impeller so the uh, volutes don't uh, get all crunched up and demolished. Uh, tighten the, the pedestal shaft 
in a vise, leave the key in, in the shaft. That will hold it from spinning in your vise. Put your wrench on it and remove counterclockwise. Uh, if it does not come loose right away, then you'll want to take a little propane torch, heat up the threaded part of the impeller, that will release the oxidation, then turn it counterclockwise and it should come off. Aluminum expands quite a bit more than the steel does, so that helps release the impeller. All right, so we're gonna take the impeller off. We've already showed you most of the stuff, but we're just gonna just point out a couple quick things. All right, it's got the impeller off, and to change your seal, really, it's just a matter of changing. Off all these yeah, you pull your this off, this off, your black carbon face right here, and the white ceramic, and you change all that stuff out. And then you put your pump back together, and you're ready to go. Final assembly of it now. We're going to put the O-ring into the O-ring groove on the pedestal. Put it over the impeller, and you'll have a shoulder in the back on the pedestal. Drop the O-ring in and. Push it in with your fingers to make sure it's starting in the groove so when you tighten the housing, you don't pinch it. Okay, and now I'll inspect. It's all in the groove. We are ready to put the housing on. It's simple enough. Put the housing on. Turn everything over. Line up your bolt holes. And we put silicone in in the bolt holes to stop the pump from leaking water up through the threads and making a sprinkler system. <laughs> you only actually need to do three of the holes. The, the bolt hole at the top where the discharge of the water is, a sealed uh, hole. is a sealed hole. It uh, will not leak. Put your bolts in. You put washers in, just put the yeah, bolts right Yeah, half inch bolts, two inches long with your half inch washer. All right, cool. Those O-rings really never fail, do they? No, no, no. O-rings last a long time. It's usually your pump seals and... Pump and, seal from sand. And the bearings, or running the pump dry, too. I do have the bearings fail occasionally, but it's usually the same thing. Customers over-grease the, over the bearings that blow the bearing caps out, so... It's very important not to, uh, not to over-grease the pump. All right, so he's just gonna get the, the bolt snugged up with the impact gun, but it's set real light. So go ahead, Ronnie. And then he's gonna finish him off by hand. He gets them pretty tight. You know, we don't really have any hard torque settings, but he just checks them all by hand to make sure they're good and tight. Take the shaft. If you've done the job right, the pre-assembly, it will turn nice and smooth. Let me see the front of the pump. So what do you think, change your pump seal for an average pump is about maybe 20, 30 minutes? About a half an hour. About a half hour, okay. If, depending on the impeller, how stubborn yeah. it is. The biggest problem off. is getting the impeller off sometimes. Right, the rest of the pump looks like it comes apart easily. Yeah, the oxidation. Uh, and they shouldn't have to set nothing, but put the new seal assembly in, everything will be set tolerance-wise. Perfect. If they've worn their impeller out from sand, the gap ain't going to get no closer by putting a new seal in it. Right, they just get a new impeller. Right. Okay, Ronnie, thanks again. I appreciate it. You're welcome.